Yes, a day after AOC has been thoroughly debunked and roasted for her idiotic comparison of immigration detention centers to concentration camps, and more specifically, to the camps that were used during the Holocaust. The media has tried to defend her by claiming that she wasn't talking about the Holocaust, but of course, we have her tweets and we have her live stream, both of which refer to never again, which of course is a reference to the Holocaust. But before we get into that, please take a moment to check out our new sponsor, RibTea.com. RibTea products are top shelf quality, made right here in the USA. Their wedgie proof underwear is cool and ultra comfortable, which comes in handy when you're at the computer for hours or on the go. This underwear will fit you right and you'll feel exceptional. Just use the coupon code DRONETECH and receive 20% off most items on your first purchase. Look, if you're gonna buy underwear, it might as well be the best quality from an American-made company that supports free speech. Thank you. Don't you just love the full court press defense that Democrats get from their oh-so-objective media? You'll see another great example of this during this exchange because Chris Cuomo spends all of his time defending Rye, defending AOC, and attacking Republicans, which, as we know, is the standard operating procedure of the DNC media. All right, so here's the issue. Is she right in defining concentration camps? Yes. Wrong. No, AOC's description of concentration camps is not correct. If I go by Google and I type in concentration camp, you're going to see this definition. A place where large numbers of people, especially political prisoners or members of a persecuted minority, are deliberately imprisoned in a relatively small area with inadequate facilities, sometimes to provide forced labor or to await mass execution. The term is most strongly associated with the several hundred camps established by the Nazis in Germany and occupied Europe. Now, I want you to pay uh, special attention to where it says deliberately imprisoned in a relatively small area with inadequate facilities. We're going to come back to that a little bit later. Are any of the people being temporarily held in these centers political prisoners? No, they're not. Are any of these people being forced into these places based on their skin color? Absolutely not. We know that for sure. They're coming here all on their own. Because there are simply so many of them, we are forced to hold them until we can find out who they are, hear their cases, and either let them out into the country or send them back to their home countries. None of these people are being forced to work. In fact, they have food, they have water, they have housing and beds, and they even have entertainment programs paid for by the taxpayer. At no point during this entire crisis did the U.S. set out, kidnap these people, and then force them into camps where they would be worked until they died. Cortez, with the new definition from her, I say concentration camps because that's how they are defined internationally. That's what these are. God, again? Look, Chris Cuomo is continuing to lie here. I did an extensive search for some kind of international or UN-related definition of concentration camps that would somehow fit this new Democratic Party definition, and I couldn't find a single one. Every single reference that I found matched the exact definition that I provided to you earlier. The problem, of course, for Cuomo here is that these centers aren't small at all. They're huge, but there are large numbers of people that are flooding across our border, and we're running out of places to put them. It's not done intentionally, and in fact, it's these people that are creating the situation all on their own. Really quick, I just wanted to go back to what I pointed out earlier about the definition for concentration camps. In the definition, it clearly states that people are intentionally put in small spaces without adequate facilities. We are running out of space because too many people are flooding across our borders and we're being overwhelmed. It's not intentional. I have similar problems with the phrase America first, which is equally stained, mm. or the word nationalist, no. which is equally stained. No, yes, as a matter no, of fact. Isn't. Okay, so what? The media did have a problem with it, and they made sure everybody knew about it. It's so like these leftist hacks in the media to lack any self-awareness to understand that when they throw out a red herring like this, it exposes their own hypocrisy as well. But it doesn't matter because it's just meant to take the focus off of the Democrat and refocus it onto their opposition, the Republicans. What I'm saying to you is, today, we sat through this president calling Mexicans drug dealers and rapists at the beginning of this campaign. Wrong. Trump never did or said any such thing. 
She tells this lie in a desperate move to bolster her claim that these centers are in fact concentration camps. Much like many of the other things that Trump has said and the media has purposely misrepresented, Trump was specifically talking about some of the elements that come in illegally across the border. He wasn't talking about all Mexicans. Some of them are criminals, some of them are rapists, and some of them are good people. At no point did he say that Mexicans are rapists and drug dealers. It just didn't happen. But they repeat it over and over again to the point where it may as well have happened. It's a tried and true tactic of the drive-by media. And even though it may do no good at all, we have to continue calling them out when they tell these lies. Our bottom line here is there is an inhumane crisis happening at the southern border, and it is because of how these people look. It is because of difference. It's because there is a fear that white people are losing their power in this country. That is the bottom line. It is white fear. That is what is driving this. It is racism okay. at its core. It is what this found the foundation right, of this country respond. is built upon. If you have Angela Ray on your show, you're going to get racist anti-white conspiracy theories. Her claim is that the crisis at the border, which is a crisis created by thousands and thousands of illegal immigrants pouring across our borders nonstop, is actually a crisis because of white people and our fear of anything not like us. I don't know about you guys, but literally just every day, the only thing that my white brain can think about is just how much I fear anything that isn't like me. Funny that she didn't have this take at all while the Obama administration housed the illegal immigrants in these exact same facilities. And in fact, Obama even said that we do not grant asylum just because somebody lives in a poor area or because they live in a bad neighborhood. When people illegally entered the country under Obama and they were detained, they went through the exact same process that they go through right now under Trump. Did Obama say and do these things because his white half is so afraid of brown people and losing power? He did that because we're a sovereign country and we, the citizens, get to decide who comes in. The vast majority of people illegally entering this country are doing so for economic reasons, which is why 90% of them aren't even showing up for their asylum hearings. We've been wrestling with this problem for 30 years. 2014, we went nuts about what was going on with the unaccompanied yeah. minors during the Obama administration because it was wrong. <laughs> Wait a minute. Did Chris Cuomo just admit that this has been a problem for 30 years? Weird, because that's what I've been saying for years now, because CNN and the other media outlets like to claim that this is all because of a new Trump policy. What happened here, I think, is that Cortez pointed out the fact that this was all going on under Obama, and Chris simply had no response. He had to admit it. For a long time, the media tried to dismiss this criticism of Obama, and they defended him, saying that it was different when he did it, because it was mostly unaccompanied minors being detained when he was president without mentioning that that's exactly the case right now. At no time during 2014 or any other year did the media or CNN quote go nuts over the Obama administration's housing of those kids in these same facilities and those same so-called cages. Chris is once again rewriting history because he thinks that he has the power to do so and get away with it. And let's admit it, he mostly does. Well, that's all I got for you today, folks. Please like, share, and subscribe. Another way you can support this channel is by subscribing to me on Patreon or Subscribestar for just $3 a month. Or you can just send me a tip on PayPal. Thanks a lot. I'll see you next time.